<clears throat> Maisha is here. Let's see who else shows up. So we'll just hang tight for a few minutes. Ricardo is here. Wait a couple minutes and see if anybody, Ricardo, anybody besides Ricardo shows up. <clears throat> Ricardo, if nobody shows up, I'll get started at 105. I don't know if you're listening to this or not. All right, cool deal.
All right, Ricardo, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, do you have any questions or anything at the moment? I guess we'll do it this way. Hello. Hey, Ricardo. Um, so you're ready? 
Yeah. Okay. So you said, was there something specific about the plunge notes that were causing you trouble or just the notes in general? Just the notes in general. I just want to, I read it, but I just want to have a complete understanding of the notes. Okay. That's smart. So um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of go through the notes that I have. I've got some visuals to go with them. And um, before I switch to the next day's notes, I'll, you know, I'll check and make sure you're good. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah. All right. Perfect. So the uh, part where it says it's getting harder and harder to breathe, um, that's pretty much the, the country splitting apart um, in the mid 1850s, uh, mostly over slavery. Um, you were here last week, right? What do you mean last week? Like the last last week's video uh, presentation? Yeah. Okay. So remember they set up, um, um, they wanted to do popular sovereignty, Stephen Douglas did, to let the people moving west to decide whether or not to expand slavery. And so once that was done, <clears throat> you had the Kansas and Nebraska Act passed, and the Republican Party hated the plan for Kansas and Nebraska. And so they had a goal to limit slavery to where it was. And that leads you into the presidential election of 1856, which I'll show you right quick. Let me set that up right. Come on. Okay. Can you see the map all right? I don't see your thing yet. You don't see the presentation. Map. Yeah, I don't see it. Okay. Um, no hmm. Let me try to reset it. Now I can see it. Okay, good. So, hmm. um, so now you can see the map, all right? Mm, yeah. Okay. So the blue states represent the Democrats. Any map like this for president, the blue always stands for the Democrats, and the red will stand for the Republicans. So which part of the U.S. didn't support the Republicans at all? The southern correct part. Yep, that's it. And the reason that is is because if you got the Republicans saying we want to limit slavery, there's no way the South is going to vote for those people. So that kind of helps. But what it, but what this map's trying to show is if you look the South, nobody likes the Republicans there, and in the North, most of those states are Republican states, right? Yes. Okay. So that's kind of the idea I'm, I'm starting us off with. Um, you had the Scott versus Sanford decision, and you did the warm up on that. Am I correct? Uh, which one? Uh, it was called the Dred Scott warm up. I think so. Okay. So so we're we're good with that. Um, unless you had questions about it. No, I don't got questions about it. Okay. Um, Royal was here this morning, and he was wanting to know about the Lincoln-Douglas debates. Um, a lot of kids get thrown off a bit by that. And so what you got there is you got this election, which they're showing you on this screen. Do um, you see Lincoln standing up in the middle? Yes. Okay. And you see next to his hand on the table that glass of water? Mm, yeah. The guy on the other side of the glass is Stephen Douglas. And he's standing up too, but that's how much shorter he is compared to Lincoln. So that always takes a lot of people back, how short Douglas is and how tall Lincoln is compared to Douglas. Um Douglas is the guy who came up with this idea of popular sovereignty. Let the people decide out in the West 
whether there'll be slave states or free states. And he's a senator from Illinois at the time. He is up for uh, re-election in 1858. <clears throat> Abraham Lincoln is trying to beat him to take his seat. And Lincoln challenges Douglas to several debates. Douglas degree, agrees. Here's one of the illustrations of one of the debates. And what um, is famous in this speech is, well, it's not speech, but it's famous in the, um, the debate, is Lincoln comes up with a famous saying that America is a house divided. So, like, if, you, if you're looking at the camera, you see my hands are trying to make, like, the roof of a house. And if the roof doesn't come together, if it's split like this, are the walls going to be able to stand on its own? No, uh, no. No, they're going to be weak and wobbly and it'll fall apart. Lincoln says America is like a house divided in half. You have half of America that's slave states, half of America that's free states, and, you know, they don't go together anymore. And he says that America is going to fall unless it comes together. So what he says in the debate is he says that America will either be all one thing or all the other. And that scares the South when they hear this because they're like, oh, man, if he's a Republican, he doesn't think they're going to be all slave. He must want to get rid of slavery. And so he loses the election, but he becomes known throughout the country because of what he said. Now, Douglas won the seat anyway, but Douglas in the process angered the South because he was asked, well, what if um, Kansas, for example, votes to become a slave state and you have some town in Kansas that doesn't like slavery. Douglas said that that town in Kansas could ignore the slavery laws and do its own thing. So now Douglas looks like a sellout, uh, a guy who can't be trusted and the South will never support Douglas again. Um, and then the next thing you have right after this is you have this guy by the name of John Brown, which I'll show you in a moment. If I can get this to work. Present. Okay. Can you see the guy holding his hand up? Okay. Mm -hmm. That is John Brown. And John Brown um, was an abolitionist. Do you remember what an abolitionist wants to do? No, I, I forgot. Okay, so do you know what it means to abolish something? Abolish something? Abolish. Yes. Okay, can you tell me? Yes, uh, I know what it means. Well, go ahead. Go ahead and tell me. Now it's like to destroy or take away something. Exactly. And so when we're talking about taking away something in this time, we're talking about people who want to get rid of slavery, you know, free the slaves. And so John Brown, being an abolitionist, he wants to end slavery. And he thinks God has given him a mission to do that. He thinks God talks to him like I'm talking to you. And so John Brown has some grown sons and, you know, they believe him because he's their dad. And so they all moved from upstate New York over to Kansas. And he finds people who are for slavery and attacks them. He even kills some of them. And he didn't get punished because it was like the Wild West back in the day. Kansas was considered to be way out west. And so when he got away with it, um, according to John Brown, he got a new mission from God. And that was to take him and his sons out to Northern Virginia, where there was an arsenal. Do you know what an arsenal is? Like, um, where they hide weapons and stuff? That's exactly what it is. So John Brown goes out to Virginia to try to take this arsenal to get all those weapons and give them out to slaves and other abolitionists to free the slaves and then go to other arsenals with their momentum and do it over and over and end slavery. Um, it did not go according to plan. He was trapped by the Marines. He was arrested. 
Um, Virginia put him on trial for treason because he used, you know, he was trying to overthrow, you know, or, you know, attack the government by force. So, and he didn't really defend himself either. Um, he was convicted. He was sentenced to death right before he was hung. He said, I hope to wash away the sins of slavery without much blood, but now I see it will take a lot more blood. And so the South sees him as kind of like a terrorist because he's trying to use violence to get what he wants. The North sees him as a hero who died for a, a cause, you know, a martyr. And so when the North starts saying that, they see this as kind of like a big conspiracy. Like the North was like cheering him on, you know, the North must have been helping him, you know. And so that makes the South even more paranoid. They start arming for war because they think, hey, the next thing that happens, we ain't putting up with this anymore. Um, and that's pretty much that day's worth of notes. Does that kind of help you at all? Yeah. Okay. Um, you ready for the next day? Yes. All right. So the next set of notes that you said you read were, were called the plunge because this is like you're diving off a cliff into – you know, the ocean, but there's a bunch of rocks down at the bottom. That's kind of what's going on today. Um, <clears throat> we're going to start the Civil War pretty much with these notes. And it starts off with this very weird election in 1860, which I'm going to show you in a moment. Um, okay. Um, is the map showing up for you? Yeah. Okay. How many colors of states do you see on this map? Four. Right. Because you got four candidates for president. It's a very unusual election in that sense because, you know, you usually only have two. Um, trying to think. Did you do the 1860 election warm up yet? Uh, was that Friday's warm up? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I just finished it. Okay. All right. Just checking. So. <laughs> Um, who won that election? Lincoln, no? Yes, he did. And those are what color states on the map? Um, the dark blue. No, not the dark not blue. The red, the red one. Yeah, the red. Because if you look at the numbers, you see like Illinois has got 11, Ohio has got 23. Those are the bigger states. And they're all located in what part of the country? Uh, the uh, northern part. You are correct. Every single state that Lincoln won in 1860, they were all free states. Lincoln did not win any of the slave states. So that's more evidence that the country is being broken up over slavery. Um, if you look at the dark blue down at the bottom, those are the states that were most in favor of slavery. And these were the Southern Democrats. The Democrats broke in two parts because the Democrats as a country wanted to pick Stephen Douglas, the short guy who, you know, who beat Lincoln. Um, but Douglas, remember, wasn't trusted in the South. So when the Democrats picked Douglas, the Southern Democrats broke away, picked their own guy for president, and that's the dark blue. The light blue, Missouri and New Jersey, stuck with Douglas. Um, and then these yellow states or whatever color that is, that was, those were won by a guy by the name of John Bell and Bell said, Hey, let's not fight over slavery. Let's keep the country together. So this kind of shows the country is breaking into pieces over the whole issue. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. Yes. So once Lincoln wins, and what month do they vote for president, by the way? Correct. November. So Lincoln wins in November of 1860, but he won't become president until March of 61. In the meantime, the South starts losing its mind because they think Lincoln is going to come after them and come after slavery. And so what this map is showing you is you have states start to say, hey, 
We don't want to be part of the United States anymore. We want to break off. We want to be our own country. And the president at the time, James Buchanan, um, didn't do anything about it. Um, this is why a lot of people who study history think James Buchanan might be the worst president we ever had because he kind of let this all happen. If you're looking at the map, um, try to find and tell me which state in the South was the first to break away. Um. Was it Mississippi? Um, when did or? when did Mississippi break off? Oh, January eighteen sixty one. Right. If you look to the east, there's another one that breaks earlier than that. South Correct. Carolina. So South Carolina broke off first. Buchanan didn't do anything. And that's when these other states in this peach color, I guess is what this is, all break off. So Buchanan president, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven states in the South break just because Lincoln's elected, even though he's not even president yet. They're not even going to give Lincoln a chance to be president. That's how mad they are. And so these seven states join together and form what they call the Confederate States of America. And they even pick their own president, which is this guy, there he goes, Jefferson Davis. And um, a lot of my kids say he looks a little like Colonel Sanders because he's got like the KFC beard thing going on. Um, so some kids remember him that way. But that's the president of the Confederacy. Um, <clears throat> Lincoln becomes president. And he tells the South, you guys need to reconsider this. I won't fight you, but, you, you know, I can't ignore this either. The South ignores him. Um, there is a fort in South Carolina, which I'm putting my little cursor over, known as Fort Sumter. And Fort Sumter is running out of food. The South won't let people travel in there to give it food. So Lincoln tells the South, hey, I'm going to send a ship in here. It has no weapons. All it's got is food. Can you let them go? The South says, nope, we're not going to let them go because you guys are invading our sovereign territory. They, they even try to blow the ship up. The ship has to run back. And so the South gives the commander of this fort a deadline. He says, you have X amount of time to surrender or we're going to bomb the fort. Um, the guy doesn't surrender. They bomb the fort for 24 hours nonstop. Um, and then the guy who commanded the fort surrendered because, you know, his fort was being blown up. Um, so Lincoln's like, okay, I see how it is. Now I'm going to have, since I was attacked, you know, Lincoln was very smart that way. He, he waited for the South to attack him first, make the South look like the aggressors. So he said, okay, they've attacked. I need every state in the country to help contribute to make our military large enough to go fight the South. When that happened, you had four more states. These are the states in this purplish color here say, we can't attack the South. They're like our brothers. You know, we, we weren't going to join because of Lincoln, but we can't fight our fellow Southerners. So now it's time for us to secede, to break away, and join the Confederates. So you got one, two, three, four more states, including North Carolina. So now how many total states have broken off by this point? Eight. Well, you had the seven to start with. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you got four more. Eleven. Correct. So you're going to have 11 Confederate states. Um, Lincoln is now worried about these states in the yellow here. Okay. Because those states have slaves in them. They're slave states. So a lot of people in this those states, 
you know, feel, you know, their sympathies with the South. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. Okay. But they're, they're not mad enough. You know, they got enough business in the North that they haven't broken away yet. And Lincoln's got to keep them on the North side in this war, because if this, these states here break off, you're going to almost double the amount of soldiers that the South has to fight with. And you're going to do the same with the factory production. Do you see where my cursor is resting right now? Mm, yes. Okay. Um, that is where Washington, D.C. is located. And Lincoln is very worried about Washington, D.C. because if Maryland seceded, D.C. would have been surrounded. It would have been almost impossible for the North to win the war at that point. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. All right. So those are your plunge notes. Um, and... If you're ready, we can go ahead and knock out um, the first two days of Civil War notes, and we'll be all set. Does that sound good? Yeah, I got a question. Yes. Um, this Thursday, are you giving out work, or is it Friday? Um, they, the school's giving out packets again on Thursday at the school, from what I've understood. Um, it can't be Friday, because, you know, that's a holiday. Um, so yeah, so school's going to be closed on Friday. Do we got like, do, are we getting anything for your class? Like, um, no? I know you've been doing most of your work online. Um, what I was going to do was I was going to email everybody who's been doing work online, the next set of, uh, notes and reading packets. Um, does that sound okay with you personally? Uh, I don't mind it, but it's like, you know, for the homework stuff, Yeah, I, I need a packet to search it up. Okay, um, I'm trying to think. Because, um, like, I could email you the packet, and you and all you'd have to do is, like, click on it. I mean, would you, I mean, I can still make a, a paper packet. Would you still rather have a paper packet? Well, if you say you can send it online, I can do that too. Yeah, um, yeah, because because um the the problem that I have is I'm going to the school today. I'm going to be there from three to four, and there's only going to be like two other people in the whole building. And the only thing I'm allowed to do is to make copies that you guys are going to get on Thursday. And the less I have to print, the the you know. The, the more I'll be able to do. Um, the last packets I gave that were the blue papers um, that came out a couple weeks ago. It took me like two, three hours to make those, and they're not going to give me that much time. So if you can, I can just email you and the other people who are working online packets, if that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. All right. Perfect. Um, so any any other questions before I get into the Civil War notes? No. Okay. So the first day's worth of notes, you're pretty much looking at comparing how the sides are starting off the war. Uh, the North has all of the advantages on paper. On paper, this war should not even last a year. The North has four times as many soldiers as the South has. You know, if you're in a school fight, and you got one guy fighting four guys, you know, it's it's not going to end well for the one guy, right? So most people thought, well, dang, if the South has only a quarter of the fighters the North has, you know, it ain't going to last long. They also had 10 times as many factories as the South had, 10 times as many naval ships, four times as many railroads, three times as much food they're like man there's no way this war is going to last very long that's what most of the world thought that's what the north thought um the confederates had a few advantages though one they're fighting on their home ground um you know so you know that usually fires people up when you're fighting at home the other thing is too is the south does not have to take over the north the north has to take over the south so the south is thinking you know, if the North comes at us, we'll just knock them back and knock them back 
and knock them back. And after a few times of that, the North will get tired of it and say, ah, screw it. If they want to be independent, let them be independent. That's kind of the, the strategy of the South. Um, the other thing the South has going for it is a lot of the officers join the Confederates, especially ones who had fought Mexico in the war about 10 or 15 years earlier. Uh, one of these guys I'm going to show you real quick is seen as the most skilled officer of the Confederates. And he, a lot of people consider him the most skilled officer in American history. And this guy you're looking at is Robert E. Lee. Can you see him all right? Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> another problem that the North has is the North, um, you know, up to this time had used gold and silver coins for its money, but they didn't have enough gold and silver coins to pay for all the things they wanted. So for the first time in American history, the U.S. government is making paper money that's good in all of the states. And these these paper bills are nicknamed greenbacks because, I mean, there's the back of it and it's all in green, right? Um, let me show you a, a paper bill real quick because they're still called greenbacks. Um, like here's the front of a bill. You can see it, right? Yeah. Okay. So most of this ink is black ink, except for this little seal here and the serial numbers here. But if you flip it to the back, it's all green. All of the ink is green. And so that all started in the Civil War. Um, the North is, is split up politically, especially with the Democrats. Um, you have half of the Democrats who hate Lincoln but support the war. They're like, hey, the South, you know, caused trouble. We got to, you know, bring them back. Those are called the war Democrats. Then you got some other Democrats who hate Lincoln and hate the war. They're like, hey, if the South wants to go, just let them go, you know. Um, and these guys are the peace Democrats, but they're nicknamed the Copperheads because a copperhead is a snake, right? Yes. And, and uh, a copperhead is a snake that blends into its surrounding. It's camouflaged. So you're walking in the woods. You don't see it because it's brown and, and gray like the, the dead leaves. On the, just, and then, boom, it gets you. Well, these guys kind of blend in because if you talk with them about the weather or sports or, you know, what's going on in church, you know, they sound like anyone else in the North, but they're not because, you know, they're, they like the South, you know, they're going to, you know, bite America and take it down if we don't watch out for them. And so they, they get this nickname, the Copperheads. Um, and this war is going to last so long and get so bloody that they're going to run out of volunteers to join the army. They're going to have to start drafting people. And the word for that is conscription. Um, Lincoln is also going to do something very controversial. He is going to uh, suspend a part of the Constitution, which he is allowed to do during a civil war, um, but people still uh, criticized him for it. It's known as habeas corpus. And that part of the Constitution basically says if you are arrested, um, you have the right to be taken in front of a judge in a quick amount of time and be told why you've been arrested. Lincoln says, hey, we can't clog up the courts that way because we've got tens of thousands and down near the border of the South, we've got hundreds of thousands of people who are supporting the Confederates. You know, we, we all, it's, it's just too hard to do. So we'll lock them up for now and keep them there until the war is over. Um, so a lot of people in the North who didn't like Lincoln said he was acting like a dictator or a tyrant. Um, so that's that's something uh, some people remember about him. The South, a lot of the same stuff's happened. The South is also drafting people. The South has also suspended habeas corpus. Um, and they're printing paper money just like the North is. Um, 
questions as far as that comparing the north and the south goes at the moment? If, like, it's, just, it's not really important, but, like, you mentioned how the south was printing its own money. Yeah, they were, they were printing their own money, uh, paper money, just like the north. So if somebody, it's, so if somebody like tries to use that money to in today's times, they can't get none for it. Um, you mean southern money? Is that where you're talking about, like money from the Confederates? Yeah. Um, it's not legal money, no, um, but so much Confederate money was destroyed at the end of the war. Um, like if you took it to like a collector or something, they would pay you money for it as a collector's item, but it wouldn't be legal money. No. Oh. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, you ready to keep going? Yes. All right, this is the last part of the notes um, for the week. Um, you, you have some, some issues that are affecting the war. Um, it's kind of like in the background, but, you know, some of them are kind of a big deal. Um, we almost went to war with Britain at this time. Um, the Confederates, they only had one advantage over the North. And that was the fact that they grew a lot more cotton than the North. Um, the South wanted to sell that cotton to the Europeans and use that money to buy weapons over there and bring those weapons back to the South to fight the North. Does, is that kind of, can you kind of follow that idea? Well, can you repeat that again? You were cutting off. Yeah, so you got the South. I'm going to try to – yeah, you got the South over here, right? They don't have a lot of resources except for cotton. So what they want to do is sell the cotton over to Europe over here. While they're over here selling the cotton, you know, they'll get money for it, right? Yes. Okay, so take that money – while they're in Europe, and buy weapons. Now you take those weapons, bring them back down in the south to fight the north. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So there was a big problem that caused because the Americans were looking for Southerners trying to sneak off and do this. And they caught a couple of them on a British ship known as the Trent. The Americans stopped that ship they took the two Southerners off and put them in jail. The British were so mad, they said, you better let them go or we're going to go to war with you. And some people said, hey, let's bring them on. We beat the British twice. We'll beat them again. Lincoln said, no, we don't want to go to war with the British. We're not strong enough to fight the British and the South at the same time. You know, nowadays maybe that could work, but not in 1860, whatever. So. They, Lincoln let the guys go. He apologized to the British, said we won't do that again. Um, but he does try to block off the port cities, but he's not going to try to stop British ships on the middle of the ocean like he did. Um, technology is going to make this war the deadliest war in American history. The Civil War is still deadlier than any other war we ever fought in as a country because we're killing Americans, one. The other thing is, is our technology is getting better. Um, before this time, if you shot a cannonball, that cannonball would fly through the air, and then it would fall to the ground and either stay there or roll or bounce or something, but that's all it would do. Um, now you got cannonballs in this war where the cannonball can you know, fly for a while and if it hits something, it can blow up. And all you got these giant metal fragments flying around with sharp edges, jagged edges, 
that can hit somebody in the leg, in the chest, in the head. And so that's going to kill a lot more people. Um, you also have ships that are wrapped in iron plates that are going to make them more difficult to sink. Um, you also have what I'm going to show up here, these cone-shaped bullets. Can you see that bullet that I've got up close? Yeah. This was an actual Civil War bullet. And um, a couple of weeks ago, I took it out and I held it in my hand. And they're heavy little bullets. You didn't think they'd be, I mean, it's, it's not that big. Now, there's my finger to compare, but they're heavy. And so they're shaped kind of like a football at the end. So they'll go straight as they travel in the air. And when it hits something, you know, if it hits like an arm or a leg, it hits that bone, the bone's going to shatter like glass. And so that's going to kill a lot of people. Um, medicine was not very well developed back then. Uh, pretty much the only thing a doctor could do if a bullet like that would hit you is to cut off an arm or cut off a leg. They could cut bone and stitch it up, but a lot of people, you know, they would die of infections. And so, you know, this is why the Civil War is so bloody. Um, both sides kind of have a plan to deal with the war. Well, we already talked about the South. Remember, the South doesn't have to win the war. All the South has to do is knock back the North whenever the North tries to come in, just knock them back. And if you do that enough times, the people in the North are going to say, hey, what's the point, and give up. The South's got another plan. The South's plan, or not the South, I'm sorry, I mixed it up. The North has another plan. The North's plan to win the war is the Anaconda plan. Um, do you, have you heard of an Anaconda or know what it does? Yes. All right. So how does an Anaconda kill? It constrict, it wraps itself around the prey and then constricts it. So basically the, the prey just dies, chokes to death. Exactly. And so that's that's the anaconda plan for the North is to wrap around the South like that anaconda snake and to just squeeze tight and the South will choke out because they won't be able to get any new weapons from outside. They'll run out of food and they'll be so weak that you just gobble it up. That's the anaconda plan. Um, understandable enough? Yes. All right. That is it for the notes, unless you have any questions about the notes. No, I don't got any questions. Okay. And we went over uh, the next uh, packet that's uh, going to come out and the work and all that. Um, I'll email that to you uh, probably Wednesday night or Thursday morning. Um, and we got spring break next week. So the next time we will meet as a class is April 20th. Um, if you, I, I will have office hours. If you have any questions that, that um, pop up at 3 tomorrow afternoon, um, I won't have them on Thursday because I'll be teaching an AP class. Um, or not an AP class. My third block I'll be teaching. Um, that's pretty much it. So you all set? Yes, thank you. All right, Ricardo, you take care. You too. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.